Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Sid from Grey Hat, and today I'm just going to be covering how you can download and install a Linux virtual machine on your uh, computer. So one of the first things we always tell people who are new to Grey Hat to do is to get a version of Linux to use. Linux is basically an operating system that has a bunch of tools that are going to be useful for us as security professionals. And one of the most common distributions for security is the Kali Linux distribution. So if you go to www.kali.org slash downloads, and I'll post a link in the uh, description below, but if you go to that website, uh, you'll come to a download page like this. And each of these is basically a CD image that you can put onto any bootable medium such as a flash drive or USB if you wanted to uh, dual boot your computer with Linux but today we're just going to download the mm -hmm. ISO and use it for uh, a virtual machine installation so you can choose whichever distribution or image you want to use um, for the purposes of this download I've gone ahead and downloaded the Kali Linux 64-bit version so if you just click on the ISO here you should be able to begin your download and it may take a while because it's three gigabytes in size okay so while the download is happening we can actually go ahead and get started setting up settings on our VirtualBox software so I've already assumed that you've got VirtualBox downloaded and installed on your machine if not you can just do a quick Google search of how to do that um, so when you start up VirtualBox for the first time, you'll get a screen similar to this. So uh, you may not have these tabs on the left side like I do. That's just because I've set up a few virtual machines already in the past. Uh, but that's fine. What we're going to end up doing is basically clicking New here. So we're going to make a name for our virtual machine. I'm just going to call it Kali Linux 64-bit. You can call it whatever you want. It's only the name that's going to show up on the side here, so you know which virtual machine to boot into. And I'm leaving these at these default settings. Now we can specify how much RAM we want our virtual machine to be able to use. And this should be modifiable even after the virtual machine is made, so it's not permanent. But I typically give about 2 gigabytes worth of RAM for my virtual machine. Uh, this depends on what kind of applications you're running and how much RAM you already have installed on your machine. So I have about eight gigabytes, so two gigabytes for the virtual machine doesn't make a huge difference for me. Uh, if you have less, you may want to consider just giving one gigabyte of RAM. Now we can choose to create a virtual hard disk for our virtual machine. And I'm going to leave it at the default of VirtualBox disk image. And then we have two options. Our virtual machine can either dynamically allocate space for itself as needed. So uh, if we need more hard drive space, then it'll just take up more space on your host machine. Or we can create a fixed size hard drive available for your virtual machine to use uh, and won't be as easily expandable. So the advantage to the fixed size is that it is typically going to be a bit faster when you run the virtual machine since it's not trying to dynamically allocate more hard drive space for it. Um, but it does have a longer setup process. I'm going to go ahead and stick with fixed size. Uh, you can end up doing either and you should be fine. Now I can specify how much hard drive space I want to give to my virtual machine. So I'm just going to give it about 32 gigabytes. You don't need to give it as much if you don't want to, or you can give it more. Um, keep in mind that your operating system itself will take up a few gigabytes, and then some of the default software will take up even more. So you probably want to give it at least around 8 to 10. So this is actually going to take a while now. It's basically creating a VDI file, which will act as our virtual hard drive. And 
the size of that file is going to be whatever size I specified here is 32 gigabytes so uh, I'll come back once this finishes so once that process is finished uh, we can go ahead and start setting up some of the settings for our virtual machine so if you just click on this to make sure that whatever virtual machine you created is highlighted and go to settings you'll see some of the settings that we can modify on our virtual machine so one of the first things I always like to do is enable the shared clipboard and shared drag and drop. What this essentially allows you to do is copy and paste things between your host machine and your virtual machine, which can be pretty useful. So in the system set systems tab, see how we can modify the memory if we want to ever change it. Um, you can also change how many cores you want to use on the virtual machine. And I typically enable PAE slash NX. And I'm leaving acceleration at whatever it is. Um, you can also increase how much video RAM you want to give to your uh, virtual machine. I typically give it the max I can, which is 128 megabytes. Now, once you've finished downloading the ISO file from uh, Kali.org, we can start setting up and installing the operating system. So if you go to storage and then click on this empty CD icon here, then go here and click the CD icon under attributes, you can go ahead and find the ISO file that you just downloaded and click that. What this does is basically loads the CD drive of our virtual machine with the CD that we just downloaded. Now, when, our, when we boot up our virtual machine for the first time, it's going to look for this ISO file to see if there's bootable software there, and there is, and it'll run in whatever installer is on this CD. So now I'm just going to click OK and we can go ahead and start the virtual machine. So when we start it, we actually get this boot menu, which tells us uh, what options we have. If you get a, some kind of information box like this, you could just go ahead and click capture. If you want to escape from it, you just have to hit right control. All this did was say, hey, I want my mouse to be followed by whatever the virtual machine is doing. Although you don't really need to mouse for this part of the setup. So I'm going to go, go ahead and click graphical install by pressing enter, just for ease of use. So the virtual machine booted up the CD drive, which we just loaded with the ISO file. And that CD drive contains the installer for the operating system. So now we're going to go ahead and start installing the operating system. When you get to this screen, you could enter a host name for your computer. You can give it whatever name you want here. I'm just leaving it at the default, which is Kali. We don't need to enter anything for a domain name, so I'm just going to hit continue. Now we give ourselves a root password for the root account. So make sure it's something that you can remember and is fairly secure. Now we have the option of using up or setting partitions on our disk. Since we are creating just a virtual machine and whatever space in the virtual hard drive is all available for 
this machine. I'm just going to say click to use the entire disk. Okay, and this is basically to just say confirm your settings. If you click no, it'll take you back and allow you to change your settings, but I'm just going to click yes. And now it's just going to begin installing the system. So uh, this might actually take a bit of time, so uh, if you need to go do something, this would be a time to go. Um, it should be done within like 20, 20 minutes max. Okay, so once that finishes, it will ask you if you want to configure the package manager. Uh, through a network mirror and I'm just gonna say no for now and we can update this later on if we want to Alright, when we get to this screen, it asks us if we want to install the Grub bootloader onto the hard disk. And I'm just going to leave it at yes. And we can select the virtual hard disk that we just set up. Okay, so when you get to this screen, you're basically done with the installation, so I'm just going to hit continue. And it's just going to do some last minute cleanup procedures um, and once that finishes all that's left is to restart the virtual machine which it should do by itself um, and then you should be good to go alright so now it restarted and it took us to the grub bootloader and you can just leave it at Kali new Linux and hit enter now it should be booting up your operating system for the first time. So since it's still setting up stuff, it might still take a while, so just be patient with it. But you should see some screens similar to mine. Okay, and everything, if everything goes well, you'll see a screen that asks for your username. Uh, you can just click or type in root and type in the password that you entered when you first set up the machine. And there you go. So We've installed Kali Linux on a virtual machine. Anytime you want to boot this up again, all you need to do is open up VirtualBox, highlight this, and click Start. It should say Start here instead of Show. But yeah, that's all I had for today, and thanks for watching.